if, if Jesus goes with me, then I'll go. He's not going to take you to the dance floor. He's not going to take you in the club. But he will take you to the cross. Amen. And believe you me, we need to go to the cross. And once we get to the cross and get sanctified, he'll take us on to heaven, which everybody wants to go. But very few people want to talk about how to live that they can get to heaven. There's not but one way, church. And if Jesus goes with me, amen, I'll go. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, the creator of all mankind, the omnipotent, the originator, the God of all flesh, the Lord and Savior, we thank you today for sending forth Jesus into the world that we might live and not die. His grace enabling us to stand and withstand in this evil day. Thank you for your blessings. We thank you for entering into your courts today. And Father, we do so with praise and we bless your name because thou art worthy of all the praise. You are the God of all flesh. And beside thee there is none other. We ask that you will look down upon us today and have mercy granting us the desires of our heart, leading us not into temptation, but delivering us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, all power belongeth unto thee, both now and forevermore. Remember digging Keith, touching him in body, mind, soul, watch over him as he travels, be with him, Remember, dear Lord, the testimonies of each and every one and the requests and the desires they have of thee today. If there's any sick in the midst, dear Lord, that you will touch right now, that they might be freed from the sicknesses, the diseases, those things that hinder and tend to destroy. Father, you are the God of all flesh that there's nothing too hard for you to do. Be with us as we enter into this portion of the service that we may feast from the fountain that never runs dry. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do ask and we do thank thee both now and forevermore. Together can we all say, amen. amen. Give an honor to God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, to the deacons, to the congregation, to our visiting family and friends today, we say good afternoon and may God bless you. But truly God is good and his mercy endureth to all generations. Truly I thank God for what he has done this day, doing, plans to do, and for blessing us with a wonderful day and protecting us when tornadoes was hitting all around here and there. Trees got to moving a little heavy out there last night, and I looked up and I said, Lord, spare us. Things got calm. Amen. Isn't God good? Oh, yes. The magnificent, the creator, the God of all flesh. He sits high, he looks low, and lo and behold, Over the dangerous highways, through seen and unseen danger, he does indeed watch over us. Amen. So truly we thank God for this another day, for blessing us, and for getting the opportunity to see each and every one of you press your way out today. Yes. Some have come further than others just to see the 
christening of little Carrie. That's a blessing. When a parent working together as a whole, parents to raise up the child in the ways of righteousness. That is truly a blessing. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect. First being to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. We thank God for the sparks from the anvil on page three of your programs today. The first says, friendship with Jesus is what you need to cultivate. Amen. You know, when you plant a seed, you come in and you cultivate that seed. You get out all the weeds, the grass from around it. And then you come back and you pull the dirt up around that seed so that way it develops strength and grow and produced abundantly. Amen. So if you want to be cultivated in righteousness, then there's no greater friend I know than Jesus. Amen. The second one says, Jesus Christ is the one to pattern after, not your mother. Right. Amen. Mark the perfect man, <laughs> behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. People talk about the dance floor and this and that and the other thing. They say, well, David danced. I say, yeah, David did, but he also stole Uriah's wife. <clears throat> so you don't pattern behind David, you pattern behind Jesus. Amen. Not your mother, not your father, or anyone else but Jesus. Amen. The third one says, Jesus died to save us from death and lives to save us from sin. That three-letter word that has such a great impact in society today, sin. Sin is the cause of all of our grief, sadness, disappointments, and sometimes aches and pains in the body all come through sin. Sin is none other than the transgression of the law. May it be how simple. The wife had a rule and a law that you came in the house before 11 o'clock. Amen. I didn't say it. She did. I helped her enforce it. Amen. And those that failed to come in at 11 o'clock, they had to sleep outdoors. Amen. Come there and you hit it and it wouldn't open. That top lock was on. You knew what time it was when you look at your clock if you didn't have one. Mom had to make sure she locked the door, top lock. You only had the key to the bottom. Amen. And that, how simple it was, is a transgression of the law of your mother. And God tells us not to do that. Amen. So how simple it is, it can be also gruesome when we fail to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. And on the back of your program, it says, When the Lord Christ entered into this world, his coming was for the salvation of the soul. People are running, jogging, eating this and eating that. They try to be healthy, but refuse to come to the fountain that never runs dry. Amen. Listen, <clears throat> God's love for us exemplified how that we as a people chosen by him ought to live on this earth. Now I'm in living this life. Others in the world will see and desire this gift of love, causing them to be grafted into this royal family. Amen. There's nothing like being with and in family. Especially when that family is an upright, dedicated, well-known, well-respected family. And there's nothing no greater than to be associated with the family of God. Amen. That's what God classifies in Peter as being the royal family. You know, some families 
when they get old, they dictate and state what is to be as far as you marrying within royalty. That is to keep royalty as royal as possible. Amen. So they set things up. Just like a lot of people don't know that Eleanor Roosevelt was a cousin of Roosevelt, the president. They was lined up by the grandmother. Amen. Study your history. The wife and I went up to Greenbrier, and we happened to see her on the wall, a picture of her being there. And so we thought we'd just study up on Eleanor Roosevelt a little bit, come to find out that she was the cousin of the man she married, set up to keep royalty in the royal family, as they would say. And so we thank God for the royal family. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for blessing those of you to come see my wife's brother and family there. Amen. Come down to be with and to enjoy into this life Amen. of newness as Hannah did in the days of old. She dedicated Samuel, took him up to the temple and left him there. Because she was barren and she desired to have a child. And she asked the Lord that if you bless me with a child, I will dedicate him to the Lord. And so she did not renege on her promise. And when she weaned him, she took him on up and dedicated him and left him in the temple. And he became the great prophet, Samuel. Amen. So it's a blessing to be able to dedicate a child to the Lord. <clears throat> Today we want to speak to you about if the salt has lost its savor. Amen. If the salt have lost its savor. You see, salt is good. Amen. That's why we have salt shakers sitting on the table because a little bit of salt helps to bring a little taste to whatever it may be that you like. I like salt on my fresh tomatoes. Amen. I used to have a salt shaker that I would carry out into the garden when I was a kid and I had a little stash in the weeds over in there and grass that was growing up and I would had my salt shaker out there, and I'd go out there and shake salt on tomatoes and eat up all mom's tomatoes right there in the garden. Love my tomatoes, even today. So salt is good, but if it has lost its taste, what good is it? Amen. The same thing being with us, what God is trying to relate to us today, that if we as parents have lost our influence, our ability to be able to rear up the child. What good are we as parents? Amen. So listen, <clears throat> if the salt have lost its savior, the word if is in the event that, granting that it has lost. The word salt is a colorless or white Solid, chiefly sodium chloride, chloride, used extremely as a food seasoning. Now watch this, preservative. Preservative. Salt can preserve. Amen. You ever heard of salt herons? People taking salt them down. And they don't have to put them in no ice or anything, fish, and you know you leave a fish out and you let him stay out for a little bit and without putting some salt on him, amen, you won't be able to stay in the room where he is for the smell. But that fish, they take and pack it in, put salt on top, pack another one in, put salt on top, and they leave him in a barrel. And that salt preserves the fish. That's why they call them salt herring. 
And they're so salty that when you take them out, you have to boil them a little bit to get some of that salt out of. And so salt is good, but if it has lost its ability to preserve, what good is it? Amen? So listen, in the book of St. Matthew, digging if you will, congregation, turn with us to the fifth chapter. St. Matthews. <clears throat> I want to thank God for saving me one day and for giving me the mind, the desire, and the determination to press on more. Thank God for my wife of 42 years. Amen. All right, the Lord has designed the wife to be the helpmate. Amen. And she's been a help. Amen. In more ways than one. Amen, and I, I thank God for the love. You know, I was looking through our wedding albums there the other day and had this big smile on my face. And I'm thinking how blessed I am and how that I still love this girl, you know? <coughs> After all these years, 42 years, still have that love that, that, you know, that when you look at the person, and you still have that tw tingle, you know, Amen. that you had when you first saw her. When I first saw her, she was going up the doorsteps of the church. She was four years old and I was five. And I asked my mother, I said, grandmother, I said, who is that pretty little girl? I'm five and she four. Who is that pretty little girl? And she told me who she was. And I never forgotten her name and never saw her again until I was looking for a wife. The Lord said, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and then obtain a favor of the, look at the favor of God that has been upon us through 42 years of marriage. Well, thank God for that. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. It's a blessing. So listen, in St. Matthew's, the fifth chapter, Jesus had gathered his disciples together and, and he opened his mouth, it says in the second verse, and taught them saying, the third verse says what? Blessed is what? Are the poor in spirit. For what? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Read. Blessed are they that mourn. Read. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, he says, for they shall inherit the earth. Read. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for, for they shall be Amen. filled. You got the hunger, mm -hmm. and you got a thirst for what is right. Yes. It just don't come automatically. Mm -hmm. It's something that you have to work on. It's just like a marriage, you have to work on it. Just like parenting, you have to work on it. Amen. Hunger and thirst, what? After righteousness, for, for they, they shall, be, shall filled. be filled. Read. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. Blessed are the what? Pure in heart. Pure in heart. What? For they shall see God. Amen. You plan to see right. God. You got to get cleaned up on the inside. Well, God ain't looking at what I got on. He's looking at my heart. But do you not know your heart shows what you really are? Amen. I was listening to the president's wife the other night, and she says, being a president does not change you. It reveals who you are. Amen. You see, you may see, look at a person on the outside and see one thing, but see, God knows what's on the inside, and sooner or later, it will come out. Amen. Just like when I married my wife, after about... So many years of marriage, she tells me she always wanted six boys. And I looked at her and I said, it's a fine time to tell me now. I'm looking for the girl two, three, four, five, six. Didn't happen, so I just gave up. 
And then she's going to tell me she always wanted six. See, you never know. See, people will hold things in. But sooner or later, yeah. amen. Years later, it comes out. And then sure enough, 14 years behind Brian G., here comes Cass. God knows. Had to wait a little while to get it, but it came. Amen. So listen, read. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are what? The peacemaker. See, all of these things are the criteria for being a parent. Parents. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. You know, my dad used to say sometimes it's best to just keep your mouth shut and go on about your business. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because things get a little heated up sometimes. It's best to just hold your peace. Amen. To keep from losing your peace. Yeah. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers for what? For they shall be called the, for children, they shall of be called the children of God. Read. Blessed are they which are persecuted for, for what? Righteousness. For righteousness sake. For what? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus suffered. Stand by. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. Amen. Amen. Read. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. When men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. How? Falsely. For my sake. Amen. When you stand up for what's right, stand by. Yeah. Amen. When you stand up for what's right, stand by. Mm -hmm. Amen. They will accuse you. They will bite you at the back. Amen. But lo and behold, Jesus will whisper hope to you. Amen. Read. Rejoice. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For what? For great is your reward. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So don't be all bent out of shape because somebody is talking about you. Amen. Amen. Just make sure that they talk falsely. And not truthfully. Amen. Falsely. For Christ's sake. Read. 13th said what? Ye are the salt. Ye are. Ye are. Ye are. He was speaking to his disciples. Amen. That ye are the salt of the earth. That said on the back of the program. God's love for us exemplifies how that we as a people chosen by him ought to live on this earth. You hear the prayer, thy will be done, some say on earth. But God's will is being done on the earth every day. But what he wants is his will to be done in this earthly vessel. God created us from the dust of the ground, breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. We became what? Living souls because of God breathing his breath in us. We are the earth. Amen. Yeah. We are the salt of the earth. And what? But if the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost. The same. Lost meaning unable to function. Amen. Act or make progress spiritually or physically. We have a responsibility as parents. And when we lose that influence or that ability to teach, amen. You cannot teach a child not to drink liquor if you're sitting in front of him drinking liquor. Yeah. How are we doing, church? Amen. If you are ripping and running and chasing and won't be stable in your marriage, how can you train up a child to be stable and you are unstable? How we doing, church? Amen. Children must see stability. Amen. Amen. They must see determination. They must see a father that gets up and goes to work every morning, not laying back saying, well, I'll let the wife take care of me. Mm -hmm. We see that's the mentality that has taken over the American people today. Yeah. One of my daughter-in-laws who is a teacher Told a little kid, third grade, Come on now. you need this. What I need with this? He said, well, you're going to have to grow up one day and get a job. He said, I'm going to let my wife take care of me. Third grader. Where is he getting that mentality from? At the home. Yeah. Dad plays video games all day. Go out and hit and miss, do a little something here, do a little something there, but most of all, do nothing. 
train up a child in the way that it should go. You're talking about dedicating a child Amen. to the Lord? Then you have to show that child how to behave yourself. Amen. So listen, but if the salt have lost its savior, lost, meaning to be unable to function, act, or make progress spiritually or whether it is physically, if you've lost your ability as a parent to be a parent, to influence that child, what good are you as a parent? Yeah. Amen. Read. Wherewith shall it be salted? Wherewith shall it be salted? Mm -hmm. It is henceforth what? Good for nothing. God said you're good for nothing. Yeah. Isn't that something? You are good for nothing. Yeah. But what? But to be cast out. But to be what? Cast out. Cast out and what? And to be trodden under, and to be the, trodden foot under the foot of men. Amen. Amen. Count it worthless. Isn't that something? Yeah. If you've lost your ability, then who can lean on you? It's one thing a wife likes to, you know, it's one thing that my father-in-law told me on his sick bed. I went seeing one. He and I used to have these conversations, you know, and in my travel, I'd call him up, find out where he was at, and he and I would get together because he drove a cab and worked at the post office, places like this, and we'd have a chance to get together. And he says, Bill, he says, you promised me that you was going to take care of my daughter. And I will say you've done a marvelous job. Now that was encouraging. But if I've lost the ability to do what I'm supposed to do as a man, do you think that my father-in-law would have been commending to me? No way. Knowing him, oh, he would get in you. Oh, yes, indeed. Dad would get in you. And so I thank God for the ability of not losing the influence. I promised that I would take care of her. And he said, you've done a very good job. Marvelous job. So church, it is very important for us as people, as parents, to have salt. Amen. Amen. In our life. We must be able to season, have some taste in your life. Listen, read a little further. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are what? You are the light of the world. You see that? The world is watching you as churchgoers. As parents bringing children into the world, others are watching to see what kind of parent are you going to be. Amen. And the first thing you do is you dedicate that child to God. Amen. Lord, I can't do it by myself. I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to dedicate this child to you that you might take control. And I'm going to do my very best to train up this child in the way that what? It should. Not the way it wants to go. When Kaz was young, I decided I was going to let her just go and see which way she'd go down through the store. And that girl had me all over the store. No sense of direction. With all the energy they got, they're going here, they're going there, they're going here. But see, this is why you must train them in the way that they should go. You don't sit down at the table and start eating. No, hold on. You say, your grace. You thank God for the food that you are about to receive. See, if you lose that, what good are you as a parent? Amen. Listen, you are the light of the world and what? A city, a city that is set on a hill. People are watching you. When you become a parent, they are looking at you to see what type of parent are you going to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Read. A city set on a hill. A city that is set on a hill, what? Cannot be Cannot be hid. You ever notice? Everybody notice a parent with a child in a stroller or on the arm or whatever. You see them coming and you're watching to see. Let me see what's going on. What's going to happen here? What's here? What's that? What are they going to do next? And sometimes you see them kids in the stores and they're ripping and running and tearing things down. And you're saying to yourself, what, what, what kind of parent is that that would allow? Amen. You see, what's happening is whatever happens at home stretches on out the door. 
I'd go out of town, I'd come back in, and people say, you know, I saw your wife in the store with all them boys. He says, how does she manage to keep them under control? I said, well, this is what I do. Before I leave home, I tell them I don't want any wife, not your mother, my wife, any problems while I'm gone. Because if you do, when I come back, then you deal with me. All it takes is a system. Amen. All it takes is a system. You have to deal with kids firmly. Amen. Firmly. And they must see firmness in you. Amen. In order for them to, as you're dishing out firmly, like if you're sitting down drinking liquor and you see your kids drinking liquor, now how in the world are you going to tell them that liquor is bad and they see you drinking it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. How we doing, church? <laughs> Sucking on them old nasty, dirty cigarettes. You ought not to do be smoke. Well, you smoke. I got it from you. But if they see you loving your wife and loving your husband, all that really, you know, ah, uh, that encourages them to know that love is between mom and dad. That's parenting. Amen. So listen, you are lights of the world, a city that is set on a hill. It cannot be hid. When you have children, you can't hide. You're out in the public everywhere you go. Last night, I'm looking up. We had a situation last night with the buses. And here, Sister Zamika was coming out the door at 11 o'clock at night with BG in her hand because she had to go take care of something. And that's something. You can't be hid when you got a child. Everywhere you go, that child is with you, and people notice what you're doing. Listen, read. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush. What's the need? of lighting a candle when there is a need of the candle and you're going to put it under a bush. Yeah, right. But you put it on a what? A candlestick. Read. Put it on a candlestick and it's given life unto all that are in the house. You want to be able to encourage others by your life. Amen. 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 Listen, read. Let your light so shine. Then he said, let your light so shine before who? Men. Amen. Why? Because men are watching. See, people need to see Jesus in somebody. Yeah. And if you be a churchgoer, amen. amen, and you can't let a light shine in your community or wherever you are, on the job or out in the street or wherever, then something is wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So listen, read. Let your light so shine before men that they may what? They may see your good works. They may see your good works. And here's the key that and glorify who? Your father, which is in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God gets the glory. Yeah. Amen. For all the good that you do. Amen. Amen. God gets the glory. For I say unto you what? Whosoever what? Read the next verse. <clears throat> Think not I have come to destroy the law. Think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come to the not come to destroy, but I am coming to fulfill. When yes. Hannah did what Hannah did, she came to fulfill the promise. She promised God yes. that if you were to bless me with a man child, I will dedicate him to thee. Amen. Amen. And so she came to honor the promise. Read. For verily I say unto you. For verily I say unto you what? To heaven, heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until when? All be fulfilled. I thank God for the fulfillment of the plan. Yes. Say, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and these two shall become what? One flesh. Yes. Amen. One flesh. And out of this oneness of mind comes the new seed mm -hmm. that can get the glory of God. Mm -hmm. You see the resemblance of your child, your resemblance, or the resemblance of your husband. Or you say, that's mine. Amen. 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 And you dedicate mine to God. Because nobody can take care of your child like God can. Amen. Not even you. Because when the child gets sick, who do you call on? Lord, let me pray. Because there's a situation that I can't handle. Amen. 
Sometimes when you get old and children get up and they get a little hair on their chest, they get a little frisky. Amen. And Lord, I can't handle this no more. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, you should have turned it over to him a long time ago. Amen. Too late. Don't you wait. As brother used to sing the song, don't wait too late for the hurt to get you to church. You come on and take yourself now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Amen. That's when you go to church. You turn to God in the very beginning like these parents are doing now. They're dedicating the child in the very beginning of the child's life yeah. that it may grow up in the admonition of the Lord. You don't wait too late. Amen. Read. Whosoever therefore shall, Whosoever therefore shall what? Break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, then what? He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Church, you don't want to allow yourself to be involved into anything that is less than what God is. Amen. Amen. You have to be careful. Because everything that people produce today ain't of God. Amen. As the elder said, read your Bible. Your church may be endorsing something that God disapproved. Amen. Amen. And there's a great movement in the country today. Homosexuality, sex, same sex marriage. That is not of God, church. Amen. It's of the world. Yeah. Amen. And my question is to every individual that is born and have been raised up by parents, how did you get here? Through the same sex relationship or was there a male and a female according to the ordination of God? Amen. You don't evolve from this church. You stick to this. Because that is what's going to take you on into the kingdom of heaven. You don't evolve and become like the world. No. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect will of God. So listen, read. But whosoever, whosoever shall do and teach them. Do and teach these things. What? The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The sister, the brother was telling me about his wife, newborn babe. She's reading the word of God to him. Amen. Reading the word of God. Sitting down and reading the word to him. And he's just two, three months old. She's reading the word to him. Amen. Amen. That it might be what in them. From a birth, that it might be in them. That you might be. And I like that latter part. And whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called what? Great in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. God smiles upon that when he see parents raising them in the way of righteousness yeah. and dedicating them unto him. Yeah. Listen, 21st says what? For I, say unto you, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Amen. You shall what? In no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's not but one way to go. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. In the book of Philippians, fourth chapter. <clears throat> if the salt have lost his savior, what good is it? Amen? Amen? You don't want to lose your ability as a parent to be a parent indeed. Amen? Amen. So in the fourth chapter of Philippians, Beginning right at the sixth verse. Listen to this. Be careful for nothing. <laughs> well, there ain't nothing to that. That that you see something that ain't right. Don't you just sit back as a parent and say, "Oh, ain't nothing. Ain't that cute?" No, it's not cute. It's devilish, and you will let that seed grow, and it'll be uncontrollable. Be careful as a parent for nothing. These little things, are they just being innocent? Mm -hmm. That innocency in a child not properly trained will bring you to shame one day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Instead of holding your head up and saying, that's my child. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. You be looking the other way and say, I don't know him. Amen. Like the brother said, he told his son, you go out there and get in trouble if you want to, but don't remember my number. That's right. Amen. Don't call me. Don't call me. When you get in trouble, don't call me. 
Because I've told you what is and what is not to be done. And if you're going out there contrary, then don't call me. You're telling me when you do it contrary that you're not interested in my good advice. That's right. So why call me when you get in trouble? God says that when they call me, he says, I won't answer. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will not answer. Read, brother. But in everything by prayer and supplication. There it is. Do what? With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving what? Let your request be made known unto God. Amen. Tell God what it is. Mm -hmm. You see a little something, be careful. Be careful. Be careful for the least little things you see. And then don't be afraid to ask God, Lord, I need your help in this. Mm -hmm. This parenting is hard. Amen. I need your help. Amen. Amen. Listen, read. And the peace of God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall what keep your hearts and minds through, through, through Christ Jesus. Read. Finally, brethren. Finally, brethren, sisters, what? Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true, what? Whatsoever things are honest. It has to be honest, read. Whatsoever things are just. It has to be just, read. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, then do what? Think on these things. Amen. As a parent, these are the things that you must think on. Yes. Amen. You know, it's good to be a grandparent. You can love them and send them home. Yes. Amen. You can love them and send them home. Amen. Sometimes grandmothers have to take on the responsibilities as parents because parents don't fail to do what they ought to do. This child's grandmother stood up in the church and she testified and put her hand on top of her. I am the grandmother of her because she raised her. Amen. Amen. Did she raise her? Amen. Amen. She and her sister. Amen. You all remember her in prayer. She wasn't able to make it today because they weren't feeling too well. So listen, read a little further. Those things which you have both learned. Now, this is the key now. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen, Paul said, in me, in what? Do. Amen. When you find parents that are parents in need, you watch them carefully and you'll learn something. Amen. Amen. You will learn something from those that are parents in need. That seen in me, he says what? Do. Do. Yes. You don't chuck it off to the side. Well, I ain't going to raise my, I ain't going to whip my child. It might kill his self-esteem. You better burn him up. Mm -hmm. Amen. When my children were six months old and whenever they started to buck authority, I would buck them. Yeah. <laughs> you tell them, so you know how you put them in the, in the little carrier, you know, and they want to skirt out of it. And I say, sit up in there. And he want to skirt out. I pick his leg up. Bah! First time you do it, it's shocking. You know? well, what in the world was that? Mm. Then he'll try you again. And when he try you, hit him again. Bah! Mm. He learned, when our dad tell you to sit there, you sit there. Yes. Amen. And I ain't seen one of them got no hurt esteem. Amen. They all yes. are grown up to be fine young men. Amen. Yes. All right. Train them up. Train them up in the way that they should go. When they're old, they won't depart. They'll hold on to it. Amen. Didn't say he's going to deviate and go off to the side. He wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, he'll go out there, but he'll come back. Why? Because he's been trained to do what? Come back. Read. The God of peace shall be with you. So these, those things which you have both learned, received, and heard, and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be what? With you. You want peace? Amen. Man. Do it God's way. You want joy? Do it God's way. Amen. You want happiness? Do it God's way. Amen. But if you don't want that, just do it man's way. Right. I was thinking about how man does things. Mm. When Adam and Eve sinned and went against the commandments of God, and they discovered that they both were naked, they sewed fig leaves and made aprons. And when God came to them, he made them coats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y'all get the point? They had aprons on that just covered this part. 
But when God clothed them, he put coats on them. Yeah. God's way and man's way mm -hmm. are totally different. Yes. Amen. So you don't do it man's way. Man has all these doctrine degrees, and they're going to tell you how to raise up your children. If you want to know how to raise them up, just read the word. The Lord will tell you everything you need to do, and there's something else that's in us as a parent, common sense. Amen. The Lord said, train them, you train them. You turn them loose, he'll bring your mother to shame, he says. Amen. That's interesting how a child left to his own will bring his mother to shame. Read, brother. But I rejoice. But I rejoice Lord, what? In the Lord greatly. Greatly to what? And now at the last your care with me. Of me. Of me have flourished again. When what? When ye were also careful. But what? But ye lack opportunity. Amen. You have a great opportunity yeah. as a parent. Amen. And that is God has granted you the right, the privilege to raise up a child in the way that it should go. Don't renege on your responsibility. Yes. In conclusion, turn with me to the book of Second Peter. First chapter. We're talking about if the salt have lost his savor. What good is it? Amen. If you as a parent lose your influence, I can't stress this enough because of what we are about to do in a few minutes. It's very important that you remember as a parent, you cannot lose your flavor. Amen. Your influence as a parent. So listen, from Second Peter, first chapter, Beginning at the first verse, it says, Simon Peter is servant of an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Second verse says what? Praise him, peace be multiplied. Be multiplied unto you through what? The knowledge. Knowledge, church, is power. Amen. And when you know how to do something, amen, it's a whole lot easier. Yes. Amen. When you know how to do something, it's a whole lot easier. Amen. Don't try to take on a plumbing job and you don't know what you're doing. You'll make a mess of things. Come back, there'll be water all over the place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then the wife be upset with you. Because you took on a job that you ought to have gotten somebody else to look at and to take care of. Amen. Don't lose your taste, brothers. Listen, read. Grace and, peace be Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. Third verse says, according as his divine power hath given unto us what? All things. All things that pertain unto what? Life Amen. And this is life. This is life. This is life. To have children to grow up in the admonition of the Lord is life. Amen. 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 But see, you got to train them in that direction. They don't know the way. You must train them in the way. Read. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. Read. That have called us to glory. That have what? Called us that to have glory. called us to glory and virtue. virtue. Pureness. Holiness. Godliness. Righteousness. Read. Wherever are given unto us exceeding, exceeding great, great and precious, precious promises. promises. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing. I remember when Anthony was going to school and he signed up for all these hard classes, uh, what they call them, accelerated classes or whatever. And, and when he got into them, he found out that they were hard and he didn't want to do them. And oh, I don't need to take this. I don't need it. I said, you started it, you're going to finish it. Get down with it and get it done. I don't want to hear about you don't need this. No, you get it done. And all oh, he got busy. Got it done. And at the exam time, he 
sitting out there in the yard in the chair with everybody else in the school bus going to school, got his legs. Come on now. <laughs> he was exempt from taking exams because he had done so well. And he laughing at everybody else who had to go take tests. He was the same one. I don't need this, Dad. I, it's too hard. Uh-uh. You started it, you finished it. When you start training children in the way of righteousness, don't get up and get a look. Because children will come to you and try to get you to sway in the way of the world. But don't do it. I'm sorry, this is the standard, the rules and the regulations, we're gonna stick to it. I was taught it from my mother and my father and I'm teaching the same thing to you. That's the continuity of righteousness being implicated. Yes. Yeah. Amen, and you can give it up if you want to, but it'll bring shame to you. So listen, read. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine <clears throat> nature. You know, everybody wants to be the partaker of the divine, yes. the divine nature, that royal family we talked about. Mm -hmm. Having escaped what? The corruption that is in the world. Through what? Through lust. Lust. Read. And besides this. And besides this, giving all diligence. Now add to your faith what? Virtue. Virtue and to virtue what? Knowledge. Knowledge and to knowledge what? Temperance. Temperance and to temperance what? Patience. You gonna need it. When you start dealing with children, you're going to need it, especially when they get a little. Wait till they get two years old. They call them the terrible twos. Amen. Into everything. So it's talking about he's beginning to walk now. You wait till he starts walking. And he can move and get into things that, amen. You're going to have to start putting things up higher. <laughs> you're going to have to start locking doors that you used to just leave wide open. Why? Because they're curious. They want to know. Yeah. They want to see what, why this, why that, and why that. They see you working on the stove and they're going to reach up there on it. No, 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 don't touch the stove. It's hot. I used to take mine, they'd be reaching up. I'd pick them up, put their little hand up there on top of the stove so they could feel the heat. Pull it back. That's why you don't touch the stove. Mm -hmm. Train them. Yeah. Amen train them mm -hmm. in the way that they should go. Read. Temperance, patience. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, what? Godliness. Godliness, read. And to godliness. And to godliness, brotherly, what? Kindness. And to brotherly kindness, what? Charity. charity. The greatest of these three. Amen. Faith, hope, charity, the greatest of these three is charity. Read. For if these things be in you. Now, here's the key. The eighth verse says, for if now these things be in you, read. And abound. And they are abounding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then what? They, might, they make you that ye shall neither be burned. They will make you to neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus but they have to be in you, amen. And the only way it's gonna get in you is that you have to be trained in yeah. you. It's just like going to church, amen. amen. You start children off by bringing them to church. And then when they get a little noisy, you have to teach them church. They have to be trained that when they come to church, they don't rip and run all around church. No, they sit still. This is a time of being still, amen. Train them, train them, train them. Amen. Listen, read. But he that lacketh these things. But he that lacketh these things, the ninth verse said, is what? Is blind. Is blind. And what? And cannot and see. Cannot see a fall off. As a parent, you must be able to have foresight. Yeah. Kids will ask you, well, why can't I do this? Amen. You must have some foresight. Because things that they don't see as children, you are supposed to be able to see. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through experience and life teachings. Amen. Because life can teach you a lot. Mm -hmm. Amen. So listen, read. They cannot see a fall. But he that lacketh these things, if you lack the things that God is saying, diligence, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, 
Amen. Godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. If you lack these things, but he that lacketh these things, first of all, is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. You forgot that you were brought up and taught yes. the ways of righteousness. Read. Wherefore the rather. Wherefore the rather what? Brethren. Brethren. Give diligence. Amen. Don't mess around with this. Mm -hmm. It's serious. Parenting is a serious challenge. Amen. It's a task. Amen. Dirty diapers. Amen. They spit up. In the middle of the night, they get fevers, sicknesses. Amen. Especially when they start teething. Amen. And you as a young parent, what are they doing? Why, why are they fussing? You call up. Who you first one you call up is grandma. Mom, this child is, is crying. What, what's the problem here? Well, put your finger in his mouth and run around there and see if you feel a little nub. Yeah, there's a little nub. He's teething. Mm -hmm. How do you know that, Mom? I raised you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. I raised you. I know what I'm talking about because I raised you. Yeah. Amen. But if you like these things, the Lord says you're blind, cannot see or fall off, and have forgotten that you were even purged from your old sins. Rather the, wherefore, rather, brethren, sisters also, give diligent to make what? Your calling. Your calling. You have been called to be parents. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Anthony and Sister Tara, that's your calling. Yeah. Amen. You ask God for it when you got married. So you don't marry not to have children. You marry to have children. That's the ordination of God. I'm going to get married, but I ain't have no children. What you getting married for? You're supposed to marry to multiply and replenish the earth. That's what God designed for you to do. Yeah. Now, if you go against that, then you are violating the commandments of God. Yeah. Amen. Now, if you just can't have them like Hannah was, you need to go on your knees and pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, bless my womb that it may be able to conceive. Amen. Touch my husband that it may be able to produce. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, sisters, give diligence to make your calling, your calling as a parent and election. You have been elected. Make it sure. And you do this by training this child in the way that it should go. Read. For if you do these things. For if you do these things, what? You shall never fall. Amen. Isn't that something? Isn't that wonderful? Hey, if I plead to her truth. Thank you, Dick. If I plead to her truth. Lord said you shall what? Know the truth. The truth shall what? Set you free. Free from what? Whatever's holding you. Captive against your will. Amen. May God bless you. Turn the service back over to the diggers. Amen.